Welcome to Books for Success. Today, we're delving into the wisdom within The Relationship Cure by John Gottman. Discover the five principal strategies based on emotional bidding to build and enjoy deep and long-lasting relationships with others. You'll learn what is emotional bidding, how reactions to bids impact our relationships, principal mistakes in building interpersonal connections, why common ground is a key to a solid emotional bond. Before we begin, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications if you want to keep receiving the knowledge of book summaries about health, wealth, love, psychology, and much more. Don't be shy about dropping your book suggestions for us to summarize. Also, you can use this video as an audiobook summary. Let's grow and succeed together. Emotional connection as the main ingredient of strong relationships recipe. Whatever relationships people have, they all start from one point, emotional connection. We often neglect it or lack knowledge about its importance. Still, the quality of emotional link predetermines almost every relationship, whether at home, at work, or in a long queue in a supermarket. But what are the sensitive connection mechanics? Our brain has seven command systems that produce emotions. When we know how this manufacturing occurs, we see what we overlook in life or whether we connect or fail to do so with people we love. If you've ever been in a situation where you, your partner, friend, or colleague had crashed against the wall of misunderstanding, it most likely resulted from the inability to connect or bid emotionally. John Gottman defines bid as a central element of emotional contact. So, to become a pro of touching bidding, you will examine the way you emotionally connect with others and treat their bidding, reveal how the command systems interfere with the way you bid, See how your emotional background affects your style of connection. Fine-tune your communication qualifications. Acquire common ground with other people. When a storm or lull is coming up in your relationship, it is most likely because you and your partner fail to read out or answer back to each other's bids. The results of the most trivial argument or miscommunication can be dramatic. We feel downhearted and lonely, then become secretive and let the conflict take its course. Remarkably, we don't even imagine how amazing life can be if we respond to each other's bidding in another way. To make things work, we must acknowledge the gravity of our emotions and the importance of explaining them to people we love. After navigating through this tidbit, you'll grasp the secrets of emotional communication and discover how to manage difficult situations. You'll also learn how to understand others' feelings and bids and how to listen and hear people you care about. The formula of harmonious relationships isn't as complex as it might seem, and we're about to figure it out. Emotional bidding, possible reactions and challenges. The golden rule of any relationship transformation, changes do not knock at your door on one sunny day. Instead, you gradually nurture your emotional communication skills, enhancing them in every interaction. Imagine falling in love with someone you don't know well. You'll most likely start with a conversation or compliment, not with a declaration of love. And after that, you'll begin strengthening this connection brick by brick. Of course, people cannot respond to every bid similarly, otherwise, all relationships would be perfect. Instead, they react to emotional bidding in three possible ways, accepting, rejecting, or turning away from the bid. When we accept someone's bid, we respond positively. For example, we gladly brew coffee for our loved ones when they tell us they're a bit tired. By rejecting bids, we discourage others' requests to connect. Finally, we can overlook bids. A silent response to a regular, how was your day, question illustrates it perfectly. We start learning effective bidding in childhood. When adults are responsive to their children's needs and connect with them emotionally, young personalities observe positive examples and implement this behavior in their future. However, if a parent ignores a child's emotional needs, there's a great likelihood of disruptive emotional and mental development. Luckily, it is never too late to react positively to another person's bid, and this rule also applies to adults. And what about connecting with friends and relatives? Well, it's not that simple. We don't interact with them as often as with our children and partners. Consequently, the time for practicing effective bidding is limited. Additionally, people you've just started building a friendship with can play it safe for too long, while siblings know too much about skeletons in your closet. Both scenarios would require extra efforts in emotional connection, 
However, you'll easily cope with all the barriers after you reveal the steps of mastering this skill. So, let's explore the essential do's and don'ts of emotional connecting, aka 5 phases of becoming a pro of emotional connectedness. Phase 1. Explore the way you connect with others and acknowledge the main bidding mistakes. After examining hundreds of bids from the psychological perspective, John Gottman made an important discovery. It doesn't matter how routine the bidding context is. Our reaction even to the less significant emotional attempts to connect is crucial. Imagine a couple wandering around the supermarket, unable to decide what's for dinner. A woman says, I want everything to be perfect today, while a man responds passively. Okay, as you wish. That's an illustration of a daily situation that can seem insignificant. However, such scenarios can reveal whether we're doing great in our relationships or fail to establish emotional bonds. We bid because we're programmed to seek emotional links. Thus, someone looks for respect and love, while another searches for intimate closeness and rapport. Or for all these things at once. Some signals we translate are vague and difficult to read. But do we deliberately confuse people we care about? Definitely not. We tiptoe with all this bidding stuff because a. We're afraid somebody will hurt our feelings. b. We struggle to specify our genuine desires. And c. We aren't even aware of our need to connect. The good news is that no one is hopeless. We'll have a pinch of understanding for starters and a glass of attention for an aperitif. Before we learn how to bid effectively, let's consider mistakes we should avoid. Some people don't aspire to build relationships not because they enjoy loneliness but because they're sure that closeness isn't for them. In actuality, they routinely repeat common bidding mistakes, which force them to consider themselves incapable of connecting. We are spaced out interacting with other people, focusing on our problems. We bid too intensively, we furiously demand our partner's attention when we miss them. We criticize instead of pointing out a problem. We are easily caught up in an emotional storm and cannot engage in interaction being flooded with feelings. We are habitually grumpy, and it prevents us from addressing difficult situations. We're sidestepping the discussions essential to have. And we're about to part with these disruptive habits soon. Sharpen your something to make notes about human emotions and how understanding our brain processes can improve our relationships. Phase 2. Examine your brain and its command systems. Each person's brain has seven command systems that navigate our physical, emotional, and behavioral reactions essential for survival. We can communicate and build connections with others more effectively if we know our stimulation parameters. Depending on the situation, we can activate or underactivate these command systems. Our emotions play against us when we find ourselves outside a system's comfort zone. On the other hand, we feel satisfaction and delight when we activate the system at its optimal capacity. Our bidding approach suffers when we expand the optimal level of system's activation. So, let's have a closer look at these seven command systems. The Commander-in-Chief, we activate this system when we face challenges. Confidence indicates its optimal activation level, while fear, aggression, or distress signify something isn't right. The Explorer, when we adequately activate this system, we feel excited about learning something new or moving towards goals accomplishment. We overperform our curiosity efforts and are bored learning when the explorer works at a non-optimal level. The sensualist. This system enables us to feel intimate stuff like mutual sexual desire or deep romantic feelings. It can cause intimate frustration and relationship problems when it is poorly activated. Alternatively, too intensive sexual behavior is a symptom of an overactivated sensualist system. The energy czar system works for our physical well-being. It signals when we feel discomfort and functions to recover our organisms. Its insufficient activation can cause serious health issues. The jester system reminds us to entertain and have sources of joy in life. Enervation and delight are the optimal outcomes, while the state of overexcitement or depression is a sign of inadequate activation. The sentry system contributes to our alarming states like worrying or defensiveness. It helps the body to respond to threats relevantly. The nest builder system sets up functions essential for bonding and attachment. The system's optimal work allows us to feel appreciated and loved. Simultaneously, when we under or overactivate the system's functions, we risk engaging in codependent relationships or falling into the trap of chronic loneliness. Therefore, 
we can use our emotional energy more effectively when we know how our command systems work. For example, instead of saying, I feel devastated, and doing nothing, we can try to say, I feel devastated because I missed a great career opportunity. Immersing in the core reasons behind our feelings can open a whole new world. Phase 3. Take a journey throughout your emotional legacy. All people are different in their levels of command activation. That is why effective bidding requires putting ourselves in other people's shoes and finding a compromise. Understanding that we perceive things differently, avoid unspoken things, and figure out the potentially failed bidding on site is crucial. In addition to the brain command systems, examining our emotional legacy may provide some answers. So, emotional legacy is how people important to us treated us in the past and how that attitude made us feel. Emotional legacy is a complex phenomenon. First, it includes emotional history. The combination of emotional experiences a person observed and was subjected to in the past. Imagine a situation when your partner texts you something like, we need to discuss something tonight. Based on your emotional history, especially one including interactions with parents, you can respond to this scenario in various ways. For example, you can react with anticipation and excitement if you face positive outcomes after such conversations with parents. Alternatively, this phrase can incite a shiver of concern or even fear if unpleasant arguments or punishment followed a we need to talk request in your past. Professional interactions and relationships with friends and relatives also play a significant role in shaping our emotional history. Second, a family's emotional philosophy matters. Every family promotes its unique perception of different emotions and teaches children to perceive them similarly. Thus, some parents encourage their children to cry if they want to, while others tell them that demonstrating vulnerability is wrong. We can highlight the four most common philosophies, emotional coaching, dismissing disapproval, and laissez-faire philosophy. The diversity of approaches to communicating emotions explains why some families encourage their children to share their feelings and positively respond to bidding, while others struggle with such behavior. Third, our emotional heritage includes stable weaknesses, a sort of negative experience which accompanies our lives and affects our interactions with people. Such vulnerabilities are diverse and can range from school bullying to surviving military conflict. Understanding and articulating such traumas is vital for building closeness with people we love and finding our place in the world. Phase 4. Fine-tune your communication skill set. A memory lane can give us valuable information about inherited emotional patterns and help to refine them. As a result, we indicate the direction for improvement and become more engaged in our ongoing relationships. However, reflecting on our past alone wouldn't make a big difference without enriching our emotional communication skill set. In a perfect world, people would read between the lines and understand each other at a glance. It means they wouldn't feel difficulty expressing their feelings or understanding even unsaid bids. Nevertheless, human communication is more complicated than that. Shame, fear of misunderstanding, and understatement of our feelings' significance are the tip of the iceberg that forces us to hide our emotions. Instead, we combine words, facial expressions, gestures, and other elements when we strive for attention, flirt, or are deeply dissatisfied. And the good news is that navigating the diversity of verbal and nonverbal communication signals can enact meaningful changes in our bidding and reaction to people's emotional messages. So, let's start with one of the most popular components of communication, facial expressions. This bidding tool is impossible to underestimate. People convey sadness when bringing together the inner corners of their brows and lower lips outside corners. Alternatively, they purse their lips when they disprove something. Reading faces is easier when we possess good intuition. However, such simple steps as learning a person's relaxed facial expressions, asking questions about one's feelings when it changes, and mastering observation skills are great for honing attentiveness and benefiting from it in bidding. Have you ever noticed how your friend constantly touches one's nose or mouth during the conversation? Most likely, one experienced tension and couldn't even say it. And what about holding hands? This touch cue reveals people's attachment to each other. See, no words are needed. The truth is, even such insignificant physical movement broadcasts valuable emotional data. Become a curious and caring observer, 
and you'll understand that another person is full of regrets or delight. An ability to read others is vital for enhancing bidding for emotional linking. Phase 5. Learn to acquire emotional common ground with other people. Imagine building a house without critical material like concrete. It seems impossible, right? The same thing is with nurturing connection. Your emotional house will likely fall without a firm basis, aka shared meaning. This fifth step is vital for sustaining a stable emotional bond which is curative not only for our relations and friendships but also for effective conflict management with people we don't know so well. So, what are the main elements of common ground we all strive for? Probably everyone has faced the situation when working towards a common goal was accompanied by conflict. However, the divergence of views is not necessarily bad. Most people are idealists in their hearts, and it drives them to seek better solutions. Did you guess the positive aspect of the conflict already? That's right. They're natural interactions that help us establish points of convergence and improve our relationship. Yes, they can be devastating. We tend to endow situations with different meanings. But as the saying goes, no pain, no gain. As soon as we start to share our meanings interpretations, we'll be able to find compromises and eliminate barriers in our bidding. Shared rituals are another excellent strategy for acquiring shared meaning. Rituals relate to regular practice, which helps us connect emotionally. It can be anything from family dinners to weekends in the countryside. The main thing is that rituals are incredibly powerful for strengthening bonds because they mirror values we share and provide us with precious time for emotional connection. Moreover, some of them lessen the pressure during life-changing transition periods. Imagine moving to a new city and having a goodbye party with all your friends present. Such significant support means that there are people who believe in you and your aspirations and are always there for you. Therefore, sharing our perception of meanings, and discussing conflicts and dreams that we pursue, support, and rituals help us find common ground even in bad emotional weather. Did you know? According to the Harvard 2019 research on couple rituals, more than 70% of the survey participants claimed they had shared rituals. Conclusion Although two people can speak the same language, they don't necessarily use the same means of emotional communication. Most of our relationships fail because we underestimate the importance of talking with each other and exploring the uniqueness of emotional communication styles. Thus, whether you're falling head over heels in love or have been happily married for 20 years, it's an excellent time to learn or remind yourself of the essentials of emotional connection. When it comes to expressing our needs for connection, aka bidding for connection, there are no inconsequential details. From flirting glances to verbally expressed observations, bids are like bridges that help our emotional space link. That is why becoming an explorer is the best solution for anyone aspiring to change one's relationships with the dearest and everyone else. By analyzing our emotional command systems, we understand why we feel what we feel and whether we hurt others intentionally or because we cannot handle our emotional roller coaster. Likewise, by learning about bidding mistakes and our emotional legacy, we gain valuable insights into who we are emotionally and whether we like these selves at all. We cannot suddenly become masters of conversation and empathy. Every bid is an opportunity to fine-tune our emotional connectedness to others. We must hone communication skills, constantly keeping in mind that all people are different in how they express their feelings. Luckily, the introduced practices are a great way to decipher the code of any sensitive treasure trove. Try this. In the current rapid life tempo, rituals seem a good starting point for quality bonding. Making breakfast in bed, buying flowers or a new book for your partner on Fridays, or meeting one after work with a cup of hot chocolate are some ways to showcase the care and make a sensitive investment into developing your shared meaning system. Thanks for being part of our insightful voyage. If our summary piqued your interest, we encourage you to dive into the complete book for a deeper understanding. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more content if you're new here, and share it with others who might find it valuable. Keep on reading, discovering, and advancing until our next adventure.